Hey everyone, I, uh, what I want to share with you may seem to be kind of cold or even harsh, but it's not. Definitely not. My heart is filled with compassion for people, especially for those who have gone through such uh, extreme uh, woundedness. And But there seems to be today, I've noticed, uh, a trend of, of um, songs and sermons, conversations, uh, prayers, uh, regarding brokenness, regarding uh, wounds, past wounds, past hurts, past offenses, past abuses, all of those things that literally actually happened in people's lives. And I've, I've kind of noticed with, with certain people that it just seems to continue to be part of their DNA, like part of who they are, uh, that, that whole, uh, what would you call it, um, a default setting. It's like a default setting. They always go back. They always revert back to that woundedness, uh, whatever experience they went through. Quite often it's with people, obviously. Uh, but people are not necessarily the problem. The problem is, is that we have allowed those experiences that have affected our emotions, maybe our mind, maybe our, our spirit, and other things as well. We have allowed those things to continue to captivate and to enchain us in the past of those events. Memories, we all have memories. I have memories, even this morning as I was praying, I had some memories that came to me from years back as well, from some of the painful experiences that I went through. But those experiences, as real as they are, they do not, they do not have any effect, they don't. They don't have any power over us except what we give to them. Because you see, Jesus said that he came to what? to heal the brokenhearted. That was part of his mission on earth, was to heal the brokenhearted. And yes, when we all get to heaven, we're gonna be fully, completely, totally healed, hallelujah. But I believe Jesus was referring to right here and now that the, 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 the horrible things that we've experienced, and some things are tri quite traumatic, some things that people have gone through are just overwhelming, over the top, Hard to imagine. It's like some kind of a movie, you know, uh, but it's not, it's reality. It's what they really did experience. And some people, some believers, they seem to have victory over those things and it's no longer a part of who they are. It's no longer defining who they are. It's, it, it's, it's something that happened in their life. There's been healing. There's been, uh, you know, uh, uh, a renewing of, of, of memories, a renewing of the minds, hallelujah. You know, being able to think on those things, as Paul said, that are lovely and honest and true and of good report. If there's any virtue, Paul said, think on these things. And so we, there are Christians who, who have been able to overcome those things. It doesn't mean that they never have thoughts or memories of those painful experiences, but it means that they've overcome. It means that they are now walking in victory. Those things are no longer part of who they are. And then there are other Christians as well that just seem to continually struggle over those things. They, they, they always seem to be bringing it up. It's always a part of their present instead of what was their past and it is over and done. And the Bible tells us that very thing. It says, forget the things of the past. Do not remember them because God has healed us from those things. And now we go forward in Jesus' name. The Apostle Paul said that as well, you know, forgetting the things that are behind and pressing forward to the things that are before us, right? We press towards the mark of the prize of the high calling in Jesus Christ, hallelujah. That is what we are uh, attaining unto, beloved. No longer looking back, no longer stuck in the present, no longer stagnant in memories that are painful and, and woundedness can quite often as well if we allow it to, it can become, I don't want to say an excuse because that does sound kind of harsh, but it can be, it can become, uh, like I said, that default setting that whenever we struggle with something, whenever we fail at something, whenever we, uh, don't seem to get victory, we see, we tend to go back to this default setting. Well, this is the reason why this is what happened. You know, this is, this is who I am. No, it's not who you are. Hallelujah. It's not who I am. If I shared some of the things uh, with you that I experienced in my childhood growing up, my teenage years, you would probably be pretty amazed as well. 
But those things do not define Mike Knoll today, hallelujah. They happened, it was real, it was who I was, but it's not who I am, glory to God. And that goes for every one of us. And what it is required for you and I to do in order to be set free is to believe. To believe, he whom the Son sets free is free indeed. And then we are on a journey of healing, hallelujah. It is a journey of healing. It doesn't happen overnight. It doesn't happen, you know, uh, suddenly. You know, uh, quite often it's a working it out. It's a standing on the word. It's believing and praying and seeking God and spending time in his presence. And those are the, uh, those are the actions that we take in order to find that full and complete healing and freedom from our past. Hallelujah. And so, as I said at the beginning of this little video, that there seems to be a trend, there seems to be an increase of, uh, of that kind of emphasis and focus on our woundedness. And maybe that's a good thing. Maybe that's what God is doing. Maybe he's bringing full healing, bringing that to the surface so that it can be healed, whatever is required, repentance, forgiveness, uh, you know, uh, uh, acceptance, uh, acknowledgement, confession, whatever it requires to be set free. Maybe that's what God is doing now because he's coming back for a bride. Christ is coming back for a bride with those spot or wrinkle. And if that's what God is doing, wonderful. But let's not stay there. Let's move forward. Let's get away from those things that are behind us and they no longer control us and they no longer define us. Hallelujah. We are brand new men and women in Christ. We are not who we used to be. Paul said, such were some of you, but we're not those things anymore. Hallelujah. We've been set free. Jesus came to heal the brokenhearted. Our hearts have been uh, healed. Praise the Lord. The woundedness has been healed. The pain has been healed. If we continue to think of it, if we continue to go back to it, if we continue to dwell on it, it's going to be stirred up again. The enemy would love for that. Just stir it up again and keep us held back from attaining our destiny. But that's where you and I have to be determined and intentional. I'm not going back. That's no longer a part of my life. I'm going forward into the new things that God has in store for me, his promises, his blessing, his favor, and his destiny for my life. I shall see the goodness of God, David said, coming to pass in the land of the living because I will not faint. That needs to be our intentional declaration as well. I'm not going to faint. I'm not going to go back. I'm not going to, you know, uh, give up. I'm not going to turn back. No, I'm moving forward in Jesus' mighty name because that is where my prize awaits me. That is where the fullness of my purpose awaits me. Hallelujah. You've been given a divine purpose and calling from God. That is what the enemy would try to abort. That's what the devil would try to extinguish in your life. And you must not allow him to do that. You must set your mind on things above and things ahead. Because that is where your glory, your victory, your power, that is where your life is. Hallelujah. From this day forward, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you, and thanks for tuning in. Bye-bye for now.